morning and welcome to All Saints Church in St. Andrews. It's wonderful to have you worshiping with us again today. Oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness, let the whole earth stand in awe of him. The hour cometh and now is when the true worshiper shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is love, and he that abideth in love abideth in God and God in him. Please join me in this opening prayer. O Almighty God, we believe that Thou art with us now. Help us to remember Thy presence. Thou knowest all things. There is nothing in us but Thou, O Lord, knowest it all together. Help us in the prayers we are about to offer for Thy Church, for the world, and for ourselves, that what we ask may be according to Thy will, and for the enlargement of Thy kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Dearly beloved, the scripture moveth us in sundry places to acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, and that we should not dissemble nor cloak them before the face of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, but confess them with an humble, lowly, penitent, and obedient heart, to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by his infinite goodness and mercy. Wherefore, I pray and beseech you, as many as are here present, to accompany me with a pure heart and humble voice unto the throne of the heavenly grace. Almighty and most merciful Father, we, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. sheep. We, we have, have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. hearts. We, have we have offended, offended against, against thy holy laws. laws. We, we have, have left undone those things which we ought not to have done, done. and we, we have, have done, done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no help in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou them, O God, which confess their faults. Restore thou them that are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind, in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life, to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty Father, who of thy great love didst give thy dear beloved Son to die for us, grant that through his cross our sins may be put away and remembered no more against us, and that cleansed by his blood and mindful of his sufferings, we may take up our cross daily and follow him in newness of life, until we come to his everlasting kingdom, through the same thy Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips. And our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, Lord, make haste haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost. As As it was was in the beginning, beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world world without without end. end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The The Lord's Lord's name be praised. The Lord God omnipotent reigneth. O come, come, let let us worship. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and show ourselves glad in him with songs. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are all the corners of the earth and the strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his and he made it and his hands prepared the dry land. O come, let us worship and fall down and kneel before before the Lord Lord, our Maker. For he he is the Lord our God, and and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Pamela will read the first lesson. The first lesson is written in the book of the prophet Jeremiah, the 23rd chapter, beginning at the fifth verse. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will raise unto David a righteous branch, and a king shall reign and prosper, and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. In his days Judah shall be saved, and Israel shall dwell safely, and this is his name whereby he shall be called, the Lord our righteousness. Therefore behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that they shall no more say, The Lord liveth, which brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. But the Lord liveth, which brought up, and which led the seed of the house of Israel out of the north country, 
and from all the countries whither I had driven them, and they shall dwell in their own land. Here ends the first lesson. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 85. Lord, thou art become gracious unto thy land. Thou hast restored the fortunes of Jacob. Thou hast forgiven the offense of thy people. And covered all their sin. Thou hast taken away all thy displeasure. And turned thyself from thy wrathful indignation. Turn us, O God our Savior. And let thine anger cease from us. Wilt thou be displeased at us forever? And wilt thou stretch out thy wrath from one generation to another? Wilt thou not turn again and quicken us? That thy people may rejoice in thee. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us. And grant us thy salvation. I will hearken what the Lord God will say. For he shall speak peace unto his people and to his saints, and unto them that turn their hearts to him. Surely his salvation is nigh them that fear him. That glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth are met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Truth springeth out of the earth. And righteousness hath looked down from heaven. Yea, the Lord shall give what is good. And our land shall yield her increase. Righteousness shall go before him. And shall direct his going in the way. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Bob will now read the second lesson. The second lesson is written in the Gospel according to St. John, first chapter, beginning at the 35th verse. John the Baptist stood with two of his disciples, and looking upon Jesus as he walked, he saith, Behold, the Lamb of God. And the two disciples heard him speak, and they followed Jesus. Then Jesus turned and saw them following, and saith unto them, What seek ye? And they saith unto him, Rabbi, which is being interpreted master, where dwellest thou? He saith unto them, Come and see. They came and saw where he dwelt, and abode with him that day, for it was about the tenth hour. One of the two which heard John speak and followed him was Andrew, Simon Peter's brother. He first findeth his own brother Simon, and saith unto him, We have found the Messiah, which is being interpreted the Christ. And he brought him to Jesus, and when Jesus beheld him, he said, Thou art Simon, the son of John. Thou shalt be called Cephas, which is by interpretation a stone. The day following, Jesus would go forth into Galilee and find a Philip, and saith unto him, Follow me. Now, Jesus, now Philip was of Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip findeth Nathanael, and saith unto him, we have found him of whom Moses in the law and the prophets did write, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. Here ends the second lesson. Please join me in praying the Benedictus. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. For, for he, he hath visited, visited and redeemed his, his people, people and, and hath raised, raised up a mighty salvation, salvation for us in the, in the house, house of his, his servant David, David as, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, prophets which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hands of all that hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our forefathers and to remember this holy covenant, to perform the oath which we swear to our forefather Abraham, that he would grant us, that we, being delivered out of the hands of our enemies, might serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And, and thou, thou child shalt be called the prophet of the highest, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people for the remission of their sins, through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us, to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and, and to the Holy Ghost, Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. We'll now confess our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the, the Father, Father Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, 
suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with thy spirit. spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, Christ have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who, who art, art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us. And grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the King. And, and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. Endue thy ministers with righteousness. And, and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people. And bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord. And, and evermore mightily defend, defend us. O God, may clean our hearts within us. And, and take, take not thy Holy Spirit from us. The Collect for the Sunday next before Advent, also known as Stir Up Sunday. Stir up, we beseech thee, O Lord, the wills of thy faithful people, that they, plenteously bringing forth the fruit of good works, may of thee be plenteously rewarded. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, ever one God, world without end. Amen. O God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom. Defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries. Through the might of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same with thy mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings may be ordered by thy governance to do always that is righteous in thy sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. It's my privilege today to be not only the officiant of this service, but also to be the preacher. And my texts are from our second lesson, the first chapter of John. Firstly, the words of Jesus what seek ye? And secondly, the words of Nathanael. We have found him of whom Moses in the law and the prophets did write, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. What are you looking for? Is how many modern translations render the Greek original, or what do you want? However it is translated, the sentence is of great importance and a good starting point for a sermon preached on the last Sunday of the Trinity season, the Sunday next before Advent. I have said, as preachers for centuries have said, that the Trinity season is, as our collect reflects, meant to be a time of growth in holiness, in wisdom, in understanding who Jesus is and who we are in relation to him. The last Sunday before we begin another round of the church's year is a good time to take stock. By the grace of God, how successful have I been? What has been the result of my nurturing the seed of faith that was planted in me at my baptism and confirmed in my confirmation? This is no time for modesty, but it is a time for honesty. Am I holier today than I was at this time last year? Is there evidence in my life of an increase in the fruits of the Spirit? Is there evidence in my life of love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, and self-control? And I doubt that St. Paul meant this list to be exhaustive. There are probably many other gifts as well that we should nurture. Frankly, are you more like Jesus? No farmer plants a crop, no fisher casts a net, without expecting a harvest of the land or of the sea. So now you are hearing the words of Jesus you heard on this Sunday last year. 
what do you seek? What are you looking for? John the Baptist, of course, had primed the first disciples who heard Jesus ask this question. Andrew and another unnamed person, was it John, the writer of the gospel, many think it was, had been followers of the man of whom Jesus said, of those born of woman, there is none greater than John the Baptist. God had chosen John the Baptist to be the herald, privileged to announce the arrival of the Messiah. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sin of the world, he exclaimed. But no matter how great John the Baptist was, no matter how holy he was, no matter how much he looked and sounded like a great prophet, he came, Jesus said, in the spirit of Elijah. There was and still isn't a substitute for meeting Jesus. Nothing can equal his saying to you or to me, what do you want? What seek ye? There is no substitute for a relationship with him. His cousin John was a great preacher, the last of the Old Testament prophets, the first of the new. But all he could do, as all true and honest preachers can do, was to point to Jesus and to proclaim him as the Savior. He must increase, John would declare, but I must decrease. There's an also funny joke that has been made for many years, poking fun at those who sincerely want to bring others to Christ, as Andrew and the other disciple did. Andrew findeth his own brother, Simon, and saith unto him, We have found the Messiah, which is being interpreted the Christ. And then Philip findeth Nathanael and saith unto him, We have found him of whom Moses in the law and the prophets did write, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. The not so funny joke is that the preacher asks, have you found Jesus? And the one question answers, I didn't know he was lost. The supposed joke is of course a way of dismissing one of the most important questions you will ever be asked. But don't take my word for it. In the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus said, ask and it shall be given you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. For every one that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh shall it be opened. The disciples' response to Jesus' question, what seek ye, is interesting. They didn't say, we are looking for truth, or we're looking for enlightenment, or we're looking for financial security, or even we're looking for the Messiah whether they simply trusted their first master, John the Baptist, or it was because an up-close and personal encounter with Jesus was enough to convince them, they simply said, where do you live? Wherever he was, they wanted to be. They followed him and would be with him to the end of his life and after the resurrection, with him for eternity. They had no idea when they asked their question where dwellest thou? What Jesus' response, come and see, would really mean, what it entailed. There was so much to come. But for the time being, they were content to abide with him that day, one day at a time. I think it's important to notice that the next day, it is Jesus who does the seeking. The day following, we are told, Jesus would go forth into Galilee and findeth Philip, and saith unto him, follow me. We are called to look for and find Jesus in the very process, the experience of bearing the fruits of the Spirit. But Jesus is also seeking us. As Jesus said to Zacharias, rather to Zacchaeus, the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. Good Shepherd leaves the ninety and nine who are safely in the fold and seeks the one that is lost. In his sermon last week, preaching on the story of Jesus healing the ruler's daughter, Jim Crichton asked the question, what does it take to have Jesus follow us? The answer, as I remember, was that our Lord saw the man's faith. Jesus saw the faith of Andrew and the other disciple of John the Baptist, the preacher who had proclaimed him as the Savior, and he invited them to come with him to see where he dwelt, to abide with him. Whether you are moved to seek Jesus because of a message you have heard preached, Behold the Lamb of God, 
or because of the same message given to you by a relative or a friend? Andrew found his brother Simon. Philip found his friend Nathaniel. Or because you hear the good news from Jesus himself? Jesus looked for and found Philip in Galilee. The important thing is that you respond and say, Jesus, I want to dwell with you, abide with you, follow you, wherever you lead, here on earth and through eternity. I want to bear fruit that is in keeping with repentance. That is, that indicates that I seek you and your kingdom, because nothing else can satisfy. Seek, and ye shall find. Can you say, with Philip, I have found him of whom Moses in the law and the prophets did write, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph, and he is my Savior. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy upon us. For the Holy Church of God, that it may be filled with truth and love, and be found without fault at the day of your coming. For all who minister, both lay and ordained, especially David, our Archbishop, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy upon us. us. For all who fear God and believe in you, Lord Jesus Christ, that our divisions may cease and that all may be one as you and the Father are one. For the mission of the church, that in faithful witness it may preach the gospel to the ends of the earth. For missionaries and those who support their work prayerfully and financially, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy, mercy upon us. us. For the peace of the world, that a spirit of respect and forbearance may grow among nations and peoples, remembering all places of conflict, especially in Russia and Ukraine and Israel and Gaza, and for those persecuted for their religious beliefs. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy, mercy upon us. us. For the leaders of the nations, especially those in positions of trust and responsibility, with authority over us, especially Charles, our King, Mary and Brenda, his representatives, and Justin, Blaine, John, Kathy, and Brad, and all who work with them for the common good of all, that they may serve truth and justice and promote the dignity and freedom of every person. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy upon us. For all who live and work in this community, especially those working in places of risk and danger, for the sick and the needy, for the poor and all who suffer, for refugees, prisoners, and those who care for them, for all who are in danger because of extreme weather and natural disasters, with special remembrance of the people of Iceland, that they may be relieved and protected. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy upon us. For our parish and all its members, especially those celebrating birthdays this week, Nancy, Eva, Signa, and Jessica, that they may grow in grace as their years increase and ever live so as to please you. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy upon us. For all who have died in the communion of your church, remembering with thanksgiving the lives of Carl Claycorn, Canon Major Malcolm Berry, and Eugene Corning, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. Andrew and St. John the Baptist are patrons, as well as St. Andrew the Apostle, whom we remember this week, they may rest in peace and rise in glory. We pray to you, O Lord. Lord, have mercy upon us and grant us your peace. Amen. Please join me in a prayer of thanksgiving. O Lord Jesus, with whom we have passed another Christian year, following thee from thy birth in our flesh to thy sufferings and triumph, and listening to the utterances and counsels of thy spirit. Even, Even thus would we also end this year of grace and stand complete in thee our righteousness, humbly beseeching thee that we may evermore continue in thy faith and abide in thy love, who liveth and reigneth with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time with one accord, to make our common supplications unto thee. 
and does promise that when two or three are gathered together in thy name, thou wilt grant their requests. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth and in the world to come, life everlasting. Amen. Amen. The grace grace of our our Lord Lord Jesus Jesus Christ Christ, and the love love of God God, and the the fellowship fellowship of the the Holy Holy Ghost be with us us all evermore. evermore. Amen. God bless you and may you have a wonderful, healthy and happy week ahead. See you next Sunday. To request weekly transcripts of each service in advance, email allsaints at nb.aibn.com.